Hello everyone, my name is Charlie, and today I want to check out Sherlock Holmes Chapter 1. This is an open world-ish uh, story game by Frogwares. It's their first installment of a series of games that depicts a very young, early Sherlock Holmes. And it's going to hopefully maybe give us a little insight into Frogwares, at least, uh, depiction of the character and sort of how he became the Sherlock that we know, right? So this is going to take place in the Mediterranean, and he is going to essentially investigate the death of his own mother. And I'm sure we're going to get into a lot of stuff along the way. We're going to be able to really dive into what it means to be Sherlock Holmes. At least that's what I hope we get to have from this. Uh, so I, I've gone through the whole how to play thing, so I kind of understand a little bit of the controls and everything. And so we're going to go ahead and get into new game. And I just want to just dive right into it, check it out, and sort of absorb the world. Uh, and if you're into that, I hope you would join me for the ride. And if you like this video, uh, be sure to give that thing a like and uh, comment down below. And tell me what your favorite thing about Sherlock Holmes is. If you have any uh, history or if you have any, if you've read the books and things like that, I I'd love to hear your favorite parts of it. So it looks like it's a mother's love and uh, ask the receptionist about my room. Let's go. Ginger, that's what you need. A mouthful of the good stuff and you'll see the back of any seasickness. Oh, thank you for your support, John. Don't suppose you actually brought any ginger? No, I don't get seasick. Terrific. Don't worry, Sherry. We've almost arrived at Cordona. I can see land through the porthole. So much for docking by tea time. The captain seemed more interested in his maids than in his maps. Oh, he sure looked grumpy. Cheer up. We're back where we grew up. It's exciting. What's changed? What's the same? Ugh. I'm starting to question whether the weeks-long journey was worth it. Traveling all this way, enduring this indignity simply to visit a grave. Even if it is my mother's. Ah, that's just Mycroft's nonsense, still rattling around in your head. Try to forget what he said. I have. I believe it was that this is a performative farce, a feeble excuse to avoid responsibilities, and that there was nothing to be gained from it. You needed to do this. Enough of the self-pity and doubt. So we're a little late. What of it? We'll retire to the hotel and visit her in the morning. It'll be worth it. Thank you, John. And if you want to notify the captain's wife of his indiscretions, I will not stand in your way. Oh, at last. I'm quite ready to get off this cursed boat. Come on. We'll go together. All right, I know I'm going to dig the interaction between these two already. Uh, I like the way the dialogue flowed. Uh, the little jokes and stuff, too. Like the little, um, you know, you should totally get this thing with Ginger and that'll fix it. But no, of course, of course, I don't have any. I don't I don't have this problem. But I like that little thing. I think that's going to be sweet. Uh, they mentioned Mycroft. If you're not familiar with the whole Sherlock Holmes character and stuff, Mycroft is his older brother. So that would sort of be like this... They kind of have a little sibling rivalry, if you will. I mean, they, they clearly care about each other, but it really comes across as sort of a rivalry more than anything a lot of times. So this is, again, takes place in the Mediterranean. It's not, you know, London and stuff like uh, usual. So it's a little bit of a different scenery. And it's obviously very young. Uh, hey, Sherry, very young Sherlock. Come on, catch up. Yes, yes. All right, so we move with WASD, move the mouse, interact things with the mouse, all that stuff. I'm going to go ahead and skip that really quick. And uh, let's just take in the environment, huh? I, did, I think you can't really play a Sherlock Holmes game without really diving into the details, right? You're gonna, we're going to have to look at all the details possible. Like this tree, for example, huh? Very mysterious. Is it an orange? Is it an apricot? It doesn't look like an apple, but it could be. What is it? I don't know. We can get a focus um, by using Q. We can focus in on something. And this will tell us details about it. If there's anything significant, it'll tell us details. This is also a good way to uh, analyze people. So we can see that this guy, this woman's a tourist. She does wood carving. Maybe we can tell that by her fingernails or something. You know, Sherlock Holmes does that. She's affable, right? And we can get a detail of uh, analysis over a whole lot of people, except John, apparently. <laughs> I would have liked to have seen our analysis of John, but I can't have that. English aristocrat, 
non-religious. We can see things like that. Okay, cool. Awesome. Sherlock, don't get lost in this huge garden. Follow the sound of my voice. Thank you, John. Appreciate it. Welcome to Il Palazzo de Luso, sir. And just take a look at this guy. Turkish servant, accommodating, friendly. Okay, cool. Welcome to Il Palazzo di Lusso, sir. We just need your signature. All right, cool. Would you kindly sign these papers, sir? Yeah, I'm checking into the hotel. There you are. Ah, Mr. Holmes. Uh, yes, we have room 221 prepared for you. I see it was reserved for two people. Uh, would you like a second key? Oh, uh, no, I, I think we'll stick together. Very good. Rooms are upstairs, sir. Welcome to Cordona. Welcome to Cordona. Yeah, sure. Thank you. I want to see our room. I hope there's a balcony with a view. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, okay, so this is a really nice place. Uh, Palazzo de Lusa. Is that what it said? Check this guy out. Swedish physician. Secret society member. Ooh. There's more secret societies. Can we talk to this guy? No? Okay. Let's just check the place out. We're on room 221, I think is what they said. Uh... I'm going to forget things a lot, but the game is going to offer us a way to keep track of some things. We do have a, let's take a look, Mind Palace, so we can look at whatever quest we're currently on, put together clues and stuff, and come up with deductions based on those clues. We don't obviously have any clues yet to do that. Uh, we have a case book where we can track all the different things that we're working on. Our mo a Mother's Love is the main story, but there's going to be apparently some side cases, maybe some other stuff that's going on at, around Cordona or Cordona. Um, and then anything we've uh, done already or we're done with is in the archived section, I assume. We have John's diary. He's going to keep track of notes and things, probably, uh, as well as anything else we uncover around the hotel, possibly. I don't know. Uh, and then we have a map, and this is much bigger than I thought it would be. Okay. It's, I don't know if we can actually wander around the, the city, but that would be awesome. It, it's more likely based on the game. I don't know. I haven't... I don't have a whole lot of experience with games like this with chapters and stuff. I mean, we might be just limited to this little area until the next chapter kind of thing, but I don't know. We'll see. So this is uh, El Palazzo de Luzo. Luzo. Okay, so I was close. Uh, all right, cool. Well, we've got uh, some people around here, and uh, there's also another control. It was Z, I think is what it was. Yeah, so we can analyze the room really quick. Uh, it's got a little bit of a cooldown, but it will highlight these little yellow circles on things that we can interact with. So, like, this right here had a circle on it. And it says, Dark Rituals at the Graveyard. And so, right after I turned the corner, I saw him. The Necromancer. He started to nervously look around, but I quickly hid behind the gravestone. Common Sense told me to run, but my duty to you, my readers, was more important than the risk to my own life. Luckily, the vampire did not notice me and continued his devilish ritual. He raised a woman from her grave and ordered her to kill two men who were close by. Then they kissed and made unholy love in her freshly unearthed coffin. It lasted for hours, but when the moon became low in the sky, they turned into bats and flew away. <laughs> what? I managed to obtain a few photographs of the victims. Unfortunately, those were confiscated by the police. Conveniently confiscated by the police. He's a fiction writer, I think. <laughs> All right, sweet. I think there was another dot over by the bartender here. Would you like a drink, sir? I would love a drink, actually. But I can't have one. It won't let me. Would you like a drink, sir? Ah, uh, not on the job, I guess. Although I'm not really on a case yet. This is just me visiting my mother, right? So I'm gonna take a look really quick around here, see if we can see anything of interest. Maybe notes written on a napkin, perhaps. French noble, pretentious perfume. I'm close enough to smell the perfume, I guess. Pardon, monsieur, but I am not in the mood to talk. And he's also not in the mood to talk. Cool. We got a table here with a cane sitting on it. Peculiar, okay. Somebody left that, looks like. Uh, we got some people here. And it looks like the doors that I can't go into are just guarded by those guys. So that's how they that's how they kind of gatekeep you as a player. Okay. So uh, 221 would be upstairs. Let's take a look up the, up the grand staircase here really quick. Uh-huh. I guess this way is as good a way as any. That's 223. Uh, so this direction here... 
Got a maid service here. Ethiopian cook had firearm practice. Oh, affable. That's a maid. An Ethiopian maid with firearms practice. So if we get any murderers here with a handgun, we know what to, we know who to look for, right? It's the maid with firearms practice. This is 224, so that the numbers are going up. Let's go back this way. 222, so this must be my room here. With all the luggage, of course. I apologize, sir, but your room is not yet ready. Perhaps in the meantime you would like to relax in the foyer? Tonight the restaurant is offering a complimentary Marlin ceviche to all our guests. Let's check what they have on offer. Thank you, Turkish servant, who was accommodating. Another French tourist. Harms animals? Is that what that said? Harms animals. Oh, but he's also sympathetic. That's what a juxtaposition character that guy is. Hello, John. Let's check what they have on offer. Yeah, let's do that. Um, so they're uh, they're offering complimentary food. That's what it sounded like. It's probably these dishes that are right here. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and just see if I can't grab one of these, I guess. If seafood's not to your taste, everyone loves Benedict's Batch. Our poached eggs with hollandaise sauce. That does sound good. Hey, Sherry, just our luck. How did you get... This guy teleports, dude. <laughs> All right, what's this? Luca? Well, let's, let's actually look at it. A medium, John, haven't we been through this already? A medium. Come on, it's not like we've got anything better. Like a guy do. that sees ghosts? Is that what that is? I don't recall what the medium is. I think it's somebody who can see ghosts, so like talk to ghosts. Excuse me, sir, but I believe Mr. Galich is conducting a seance at the moment. Uh-huh. Perhaps you'd care to have your portrait drawn while you wait? Why? Pardon me. Why should I sit for a portrait? I... Sir, it's art. It doesn't need a why. It is its own justification. All things require justification, be they objects, systems, or beliefs. How about art as the lens through which we see the truth of the world? That's backwards. Truth is not subjective and not complicated. It's just the truth. It either is or it isn't. You do not need a lens to see it, just an open mind. Ha! Huh. That seems rather close-minded. Truth, like beauty, is in the eye of the beholder. So tell me, what do you see? Mediocrity. Ouch. <laughs> Just right Come on the nose. Here, Sherry, what did he do to deserve that? The servant mentioned ceviche at the bar, Sherry. You should grab us some, and I'll find us a table. I'm starving. Okay. All right, so we're not really... Yeah, we're very literal, right? It's uh, not about the art. It's getting down to the truth, right? So this is the ceviche, right? Okay, time to check if John found us a nice table for the evening. If seafood's not to your taste, everyone loves Benedict's batch. Our poached eggs I with would like the poached sauce. eggs. Yep. With the hollandaise sauce. Mm -hmm. Looks like John's actually sitting over here. Sherry, I'm over here with my new Ursine companion. Your new Ursine companion? What are you waiting for? Put the dish down so we can tuck in. Cordona's even quieter than I remembered. It's going to be a long evening. Ah, oh, come now, Sherry. What say we amuse ourselves with a little game? Okay, what do you have in mind? Multiple dialogue options in the future. That'd be nice. What were you thinking? Oh, promise me it isn't nonsense. After being cooped up on that boat, I am itching for activity. No. As you can see, someone left a cane on our table. Yeah. I simply thought you could identify its owner. Oh, fun. Uh, so it is nonsense. <laughs> It'll take me a minute, John, at most. Well, then, you can deliver it to him as well. Deliver it to him? <laughs> then what are the staff here for? Aesthetics? Oh, stubborn, Sherry. Too stubborn. You wanted something to do. Slapping oneself in the face is also something to do. That doesn't make it worthwhile. But all right. Let me take a look. All right. So we need to identify the owner of this cane. Uh, all right, so we're going to take a look at some of the notable features. Let's start with the head. It's a pretty interesting head, actually. The hand grip is a head of a golden Javanese statue, probably stolen from a temple. The dents suggest it has been used as a bludgeon. Okay, somebody aggressive. What's this? A crest depicting a bulb of garlic in a meadow. Perhaps the Fielding family or Meadows. 
or Craven, from the old English name meaning garlic place. Obviously, we are very familiar with all of these things. Uh, this looks like a special type of wood, maybe? Carving? The cane is made of ebony. It's worn uncared for and bears the scars of numerous hits. This cane is an expensive and ostentatious weapon. Its owner must be vain, volatile, and of noble English blood. Take it with you, Sherry. Let's return it to its owner. So, somebody who is... Right. I hope you noted down your observations in your casebook. But how are you going to find this nobleman? The cane itself is not enough. I may have to ask other guests if they saw who was here. All right, so it says Sherlock can ask bystanders about piece of evidence. Press C to open the case book and pin the evidence with X and then speak to someone. Try it now with a cane. Okay, so C to open up the case book and then we are looking at uh, various different things that have happened in the case book. Uh, we have the, the medium to go see maybe, table to spend the evening, and then we have the lost cane. There's multiple different things, including this little icon here, which I assume means we could speak to people. And then this means it could be pinned. So we can just go ahead and hit X and pin it. Okay, so uh, the lost cane, it says, John wants me to find its owner. To do so, I shall have to inquire uh, with other guests in the foyer as to who may have been sitting at this table, okay? Fair enough. Uh, let's take a look and see if we can. So when we pin something, it looks like it's, it shows up in the upper right corner. And maybe our interactions are contextual to whatever's pinned. Might as well ask whoever's standing here. Excuse me, just one question. I'll help you, sir. You have my full attention. Okay. A lost cane. Uh, there were three people at the table. A couple and a retired Navy officer. Observers weren't sure what happened to the couple, but the Navy officer was seen going out the, to the front garden for some air. I have to find him. Well, even with your keen senses, Sherry, I doubt you'll find the cane's owner on your first try. <laughs> and would you be confident enough to bet on it, my friend? Why not? Let's see how good you really are. Okay, find the cane's owner on my first try. Nice. Now, the clues say that the Navy officer went out to the front garden. So perhaps the Navy officer is the owner of the cane. Although the clues dictated that it would be a Brit British nobleman, I doubt the British nobleman would also be the Navy officer, but I, I, I'm afraid I don't know enough about the period to know that for sure. But I would think that those two people wouldn't be the same person. So perhaps it's one of the people that were in the couple. There was three people there, right? So out in the garden, it says. Let's just go down the, r the list here and see if we can find him. English teacher, suffering from cirrhosis. He's definitely not anybody who's a Navy person. Collects pressed flowers. Nice. A French tourist. How romantic. R aristocrat. I'm religious. We saw him before. German noble. Uh, not anything related to military, as far as I can see. Crimean auditor. Nice. This guy. Irish accountant. Retired military officer. This is probably him. Let's go take, take a look at this guy. Is this familiar to you? My dear fellow, you're talking to the right man. Okay, so he says the Navy officer, uh, Mr. Rhodes, was sitting at our table with the noble couple. The men talked about yachting, and the lady was fidgeting with her cane. Or fidgeting with the cane. Perhaps she put it aside, and her husband forgot to take it when they went to meet the medium. Now I have a perfect excuse to enter the seance room. Hey, Sherry, don't we now have the perfect excuse to visit the seance? I'm just going to give the cane to its owner. You will not persuade me to take part in this show. <laughs> so we have a reason now to go in there and talk to the medium, uh, which I, I still think, I, if, I don't remember exactly what a medium is, but uh, that is, I think it's somebody who sees ghosts, if I, remember, if I recall. A seance, right? Uh, all right, so that's here. Only today, it says. Uh, perhaps it's that door that's not being guarded. John! <laughs> this guy teleports, dude. How the heck? Come on, if you hurry, perhaps we'll see the ghost. <laughs> okay, he, he's... Honestly, he's a mystery. I'm going to have to solve him, I think. Hmm. What? <laughs> This hotel, this island, it's full of thieves. Nice. First my cane, now the diamond. Take your hands off me. 
Do you even know who I am? Hey, boy! That's my cane! I get that a lot. It's a very common design. What? No, that's a custom-made... A joke. A joke. It was left at my table in the restaurant. I thought it deserved to be returned. Well, I'll be... It is rare to encounter a straight-fingered true penny these days. What a gentleman. But I must ask, how did you know I was the rightful owner? Observe. Oh, can we please do that? Th yes, do the thing where we analyze the person. All right. Uh, so if we got a couple of clues. It's like he's got uh, swollen reddish skin. Is that a... That's a clue for us, I guess? Uh, I don't know. It's Sherlock, dude. I don't know how, how he gets these clues. Uh, we have an expensive and new clothes. Well, yeah, rich, fashionable, English nobleman, right? So that kind of goes along with that. Uh, we also have what looks like... I can't get down to his hand. Oh, WASD moves me down. Okay, interesting. And I can, oh, I can spin around a little bit too to get like a better angle at like certain characteristics. Maybe his shoes, that kind of thing. Okay, cool. What about his, uh, the ring? Doesn't wear a red wedding ring. Okay, that's interesting. And we also have uh, knuckles. So he's recently hit someone with force. Very well. Uh, a head of garlic doesn't wear a wedding, wedding ring. Red face, expensive new clothes, slightly red knuckles. Judging by the heraldic emblem on his signet ring and cane, I can I can be fairly certain that this man is Lord Craven, a bored, rich English nobleman who travels around Europe squandering his money. Uh, we did we did recognize Craven or the name uh, from the insignia that was on the cane. We we saw that, uh, and it looks like the. Um, the ring that he's wearing matches that insignia on his... Uh, we noticed that the insignia is the same on his ring as well as on the cane. Uh, his florid face indicates that he has problems with alcohol and he's still physically strong and healthy, but in a few years' time, <laughs> he'll be wretched. Being constantly drunk, he has issues with his temper. His red knuckles reveal that he has uh, severely beaten at least one person quite recently. His anger issues mixed with alcohol and contrariety uh, make him, uh, could make him a violent person. So we can either choose bored British Engl Englishman or an ill Englishman on resort. Oh, interesting. So like which part do we want to highlight about him? I don't think I want to call him ill. I don't th I, I think I'm going to leave it with just, hey dude, you're just the nobleman that's bored. Character portrait, Lord Craven. Yep, this is the portrait we're gonna go with. Simple deduction. Your cane told me everything I needed to know. I was after a strong middle-aged man with a keen interest in adventure, noble blood, and affection for strong drink. And if one were to go further, one may even be able to extrapolate your name from your heraldic symbol, Lord Craven. Marvelous. Simply marvelous. That's me, Lord Andrew Craven. You are the real medium. You hear that, Emma? Well, you found my cane. Perhaps you can locate my diamond, too. Yes, you should do it. It will be child's play for you, Mr... Holmes. And if a child can do it, then I'm sure the local police can suffice. The police? Why bother? I know this Harlequin stole it. The only question is, where is it hidden? Hmm. Fine. Give me my stick and I'll resolve the matter myself. This thief almost confessed after a single punch. Hmm. I suspect a beating may result in answers of questionable veracity. Fine. I shall spare you and he the trouble if you first answer me this. Okay. So we have a couple of different questions we can ask him. Um, uh, in order to find it, I, I think we need to first have a description of what I'm looking for. And then I also need to know what happened here. How does a priceless diamond become the subject of a seance? It is an unusual accoutrement. Emma wished to speak with its former owners. My grandfather told us it belonged to a Raja, an Indian king. So you were summoning long-dead Indian royalty, and, pray tell, you were expecting him to converse in English? <laughs> <laughs> to be frank, Mr. Holmes, I don't believe in ghosts. Ah. But Emma was fascinated by the idea of meeting a real king, even a dead one. Well, a crown is a crown. Can you describe the stone itself? A yellow diamond, not less than a hundred carats, and perfectly egg-shaped. There is not another like it. Okay, so it's very unique. It'll be very easy to spot when we see it. 
You insist the medium robbed you during the seance. But what occurred exactly? Ah! It was a dirty trick. We were sitting here in the dark, chanting and holding hands, as expected. Then something began to appear from the medium, like a, a cloud or a bubble. The swindler called it ectoplasm. Ah, yes. Common in the spiritualist trade, and quite the spectacle. Indeed. Perhaps too much. My beloved Emma screamed in horror, and I stood to defend her, attacking that cursed ghost. How brave. But my hand hit nothing. The medium jumped away from me, and Emma fainted. I lit the candle, and the diamond was gone. Hmm. Okay, so, uh, as a recap, the all the events, she fainted. He got up aggressively to attack the ghost. Stay here, and don't touch anything. I'm going to investigate further. Don't fret, I'll be keeping a close eye on this thief. If he is, in fact, a thief. Uh, it says press Z to highlight interactive areas. Yeah, I read that in the how to play thing. So, uh, go like this. Uh, wow, lots of different interactions. Oh, we can start with him, actually. Find the stone, Mr. Holmes, and quickly. Okay, well, I guess that's it takes care of that. Uh, maybe we'll talk to Emma really quick, if, if possible. Pale skin, quickened pulse, unsteady breathing. She's barely conscious. The feebleness of women. Feebleness of really, women. Really, Sherry? Poor thing. Poor thing. Let's check out the, uh, the table. This is looks like it's kind of where it went down. Ah, concentration helps you pick up smaller details around the world around you. When you see a scribbled white circle, press Q to observe the object more closely. Okay. The diamond carat. was placed on the table so that all participants could reach it. Oval groove, 1.3 inch diameter, 104 carat diamond. Okay, it's a big one. What's this? Half a glass of Baobler scotch and the remains of a Paul Aranaga cigar. What else does a gentleman need? Okay, so the gentleman was sitting here on this side with his cigar and his drink. There are light traces of rouge on the edge of this wine glass. A mind palace clue. Oh, we get to go to the mind palace? Sweet. Uh, what's this? This must be the ectoplasm. Ah. Too bad there's not enough for a proper chemical analysis. Uh, ectoplasm. Yeah. The ghost was here, Sherry. Yeah. Uh, looks like I can move around the table a little bit in this view. There's still one more clue. And it might be this. Yeah, look at this little... Uh, it looks like a pin. Like a moth or a butterfly kind of thing. Oh, here we go. This brooch is old and cheap, but the moth design has its charms. So it's got a moth design. Cool. Uh, so, Mind Palace. Ghosts of the past. Nice. Lord, uh, Lady Craven faced the window. During the seance, Lady Craven's place at the table was opposite a window to the courtyard. Uh, Luca owns a pin in the shape of a moth. Luca. Uh, that would be the seance, or that would be the the medium, right? His name is Luca. So he was sitting here. So we, we know Luca was there because of the brooch. We know she was here. And then, you know, the cigar and the, the drink and stuff is over there. The stronger drink is over there. So that's where they were. And uh, let's go ahead and talk to the seance guy here and see what his side of the story is. Or the, I keep saying seance, it's not. The, the medium. <laughs> he was playing the music. What happened here? I don't know. The ghost. I summoned it as usual, but then it all went wrong. The lady screamed and pointed at Lord Craven. And there was a shadow. Such a mystical force. It terrified the lady. And it must have taken the diamond. Who else could have? Okay, so the lady pointed at Lord Craven and there was a shadow. Are there any spirits here now? Do you feel the presence of any supernatural entities at the moment? Are you joking, sir? My nose is broken, this maniac wants to kill me, and you're asking about the spirits? Hey. I suppose this can wait. I just want to know if the ghost is still around, man. Maybe he's poking his head around some corners, trying to see how we're investigating him, you know? I will investigate, and the culprit will be identified. But this stubborn brute Lord Craven blames me right now. As if I could do something like that. Uh, perhaps you can reason with him? Please? Uh, seems like you're ready to delve into your mind, Palace Sherry. I'm sure you'll make some good deductions. All right, we have enough stuff for the Mind Palace now, it seems. Uh, were you in the room? I should probably talk to you. Thank you for helping us resolve the situation, sir. 
Maybe you weren't in the room. Uh, so it says you found enough clues to make a deduction. Open the casebook with C and then navigate to the mine palace. Inside, pair the clues you've gathered to make deductions. All right, so we go to, there's our case book, right? Uh, we wanna go to the mine palace. All right, so we have the lady pointed across the table. Lord Craven punched the medium. So she faced the window and she also pointed across the table. Those are the two clues that have both have her in it. The courtyard witness. Lady Craven was pointing at the window. Oh, not him. I'm sure she saw someone in the courtyard during the seance. All right. All right, so that's our that's our deduction. The courtyard witness. Take a look. It seems there may have been an unexpected visitor outside the window. Ah, oh, I hope it was the ghost of the Raja. What I'm curious about is there's only two chairs here. Oh, hang on. Well, that takes care of that. This hefty chair has nearly broken after hitting the wall. Could one man even lift it? At Cambridge, I was captain of the rugby team. It was no place for weaklings. <laughs> All right, so uh, apparently he got up and threw his chair, maybe? I don't know. It's broken. Let's go out in the courtyard really quick and see what we can see out here. Oh, well, right there. It just shows it to me right away. All right, recently, whoops, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Go back, go back, go back, go back. Recently scratched, something stuck. Oh, here we go. Uh, so it looks like it's, what in the world is this? Oh, maybe it's like part of a shoe? This looks recent. A shoe with a broken heel will surely leave scratches. Okay. All right, John, do you think a ghost could leave this footprint? <laughs> I'm reserving judgment. Use your keen eye to follow the trail. Apparently he is still there. That's crazy. All right, cool. Medium's testimony. Uh, medium claims his innocence. He says the only strange thing he noticed was the lady screaming and pointing across the table and Lord Craven jumping to his feet, shaking his fists. To, to track someone's movements, first pin the relevant evidence to the screen and then hit enter. Concentration mode with Q to reveal the trail. Sherlock will in into it the approximate path, so stay within that search area. All right, so we wanna go to, is it C? Someone in the courtyard, let's pin this. And um, by doing that, we should be able to, uh, actually, before we do that, look at this. I see this, what's this? A honey plotter's note, Angie! It looks like the old man is losing it. His beehives are being ransacked and his bees are going down one by one. I don't think there's much honey left in staying with the swarm if you catch my drift. Meet me at the docks at noon. We'll do it together. Ah, some side plotting happening here, I guess. Yeah, check that out. Ooh, hey, there's like a, there's like a symbol here. I wonder if we're gonna see that later. Maybe this the side quest will see that symbol later. All right, well, it doesn't look like we're making notes of it, unless maybe John's diary is. Wait, what is this? How does Sherry always know exactly what to do to get the answer? There are so many variables, incredible. Does Sherry use clues and deduction to determine who can answer his question, or is it merely luck? Either way, a great success. He did it. I should have bet on something more difficult, like finding the man with his eyes closed. <laughs> All right, so this is this is a note that has to do about our our, um, our bet with him, I guess. So Honey Plotter's note, it's in, it's right here. Okay, cool. So uh, and by clicking this, we get rid of the the little notice here. So these are like little side quests that we might be able to go and investigate later. Nice, cool. Um, so we want to use Q. Oh, there we go. Oh, nice. We can see, ah, can you help? It can, maybe he, we can identify what they look like. Did you see them? Help me, please. That's a question I can answer. Really? Uh, someone in the courtyard, the resident who was in the courtyard saw a maid who was working in the courtyard. He noticed that she left in a hurry after a scream was heard from the seance room. Okay, so we know it's a maid. Saw a maid who left in a hurry. Okay, cool. That's awesome. Thank you for that clue. And John's gonna just chill there. Very nice. Looks like they went through this. 
Yeah, and then uh, came through this door. That's what it looks like. All right. So there's some shelves and stuff. This looks like a, just a utility room, like a staff only kind of area. There's some shoes and maybe some maid clothing potentially. Like, yeah, it's a shoe. Rose Damore, all the maids in the hotel wear this exact shoe. All right, so this is definitely a maid. And uh, we can see that the maid's shoe has a broken heel. So the maid has clearly gotten rid of her shoe, but only one. I see three pairs. Oh, well, yeah, no, I, I see three pairs. Only one shoe here. I wonder if she's just missing a shoe. Well, that, that wouldn't make any sense. I mean, what woman would walk around with only one heel? And like barefoot? No, she would have gotten rid of both shoes. I'm wondering though, if I, am I supposed to use this as a, it's not adding anything else for movements. I don't think I can track the movements anymore. Is there anything else I should be aware of in this room? I don't think so. Maybe I can, uh, maybe I have to repin something new. If I unpin the evidence and chance of thievery, testimony, yeah, I know this. Yeah, what about uh, this guy? Can maybe you tell me something? Got anything? No? Concentration mode with Q. Nothing. Well, maybe it's one of the maids. Let's uh, check her. She's got both her shoes on. I mean, there's several pairs of shoes in there. They could have replaced her shoes, right? Could have. Can we ask her a question? Is this familiar to you? Please, don't get angry, sir. But I know nothing about this, I swear to you. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. I feel like I missed something. Did I miss a clue of some kind? Rose de Moore. All the maids in the hotel wear this exact shoe. Maybe I have to turn it. Ah, I have to observe the other side of the shoe. Okay. Size four with a broken heel. So definitely not the ghost of a Raja. Unless. <sighs> no. What a shame. Our witness was a nosy maid. Hmm. Searching the entire hotel could be difficult. Perhaps the other maids can help us find her. You know, now that I have enough information to ask the right questions, I bet that maid can now tell me an answer to something. He doesn't have anything to say. I bet she has something new to say now. If I have the right question to ask. Can you satisfy my curiosity? Hmm. You look like an honorable man. I have some information. Okay. For Good. So someone in the courtyard. The staff said that Lucia got a scolding from the chief steward for wearing common shoes at work. She should be cleaning near the pictures upstairs now. Okay, cool. So there's a maid named Lucia who's not wearing the right shoes and she's upstairs cleaning near the pictures. All right, well, let's take check that out. Uh, there's no pictures here. That's probably not Lucia. Scottish maid smoker, friendly. Uh, she's got the right shoes on, it seems. Ethiopian cook enjoys op uh, walks in open air. Also not near any pictures. So we can continue. There's pictures over there. It's probably where it is. What's this? Uh, a letter lost in the hotel. Dear James, I read your treaty on the binomial theorem with great interest. And although some parts of it still remain unclear for me, I must say that you have done an impressive amount of research. I strongly recommend that you publish as soon as possible for I anticipate a great and wide practical usage of your method uh, as soon as it becomes known. Sincerely yours, Professor Gilbert. Interesting, okay. Binomial theorem. So there's some pictures over here, but I don't see anybody cleaning. What room is this? 226. This is like a reference for me later. There's some people out on the balcony there. Can I see what they are? Can I see who they are? Can't walk through the door though, unfortunately. Oh, this this might be her here. 
She's definitely got the right shoes on, but she is cleaning your pictures. This might be Lucia. Wait, did I? This painting looks authentic, but it's just a talented imitation. How can you tell? Because he's Sherlock Holmes, that's how we can tell. Finally, there you are. One would think a maid would be easy to find in this place. I'm, I'm sorry, sir. Do you need more towels? No, no. You are the maid who saw the ghost in the seance room, yes? How did you know? Simple. You changed shoes after breaking a heel while fleeing the scene. I'm sorry, sir, but if I may ask, who are you? I'm a writer. Lie. No, I'd have no reason to lie, I don't think. I mean, what, is she going to run away? I'm pretty sure she cannot run me. I'm solving a crime. A precious diamond was stolen during the seance. Lord Craven entrusted me with its recovery. I'm, I'm sorry, sir, but we are forbidden to discuss the private matters of our guests. Ah. Uh, hmm. Are you also forbidden from peeking into private rooms, Miss? Saletta. Lucia Saletta, sir. Tell me, Miss Saletta, what would your manager say if he knew you were spying on guests? I... Oh, please, sir, don't tell him. I have a family. I need this work. I won't. But only if you answer my questions truthfully. And don't play coy. I can tell. What did you see in the room? Describe what happened during the seance. Um, a lady and two gentlemen were sitting at a table, touching their hands to something. The medium started to whisper and, and chant, and a ghost appeared. A ghost? You're confident? Hmm? It was unearthly, sir. It grew from the medium's chest. A glowing cloud or a bubble. I pressed closer against the window to see better. And the lady saw you? How did she? Yes. She screamed and pointed, so I hurried to escape, and I broke my heel. But I did see the ghost. A sickly, evil thing. Did you see anything else? And that's all you can tell me? Did you see any of what happened next? <laughs> the, the medium, Mr. Galici. He was doing something with the ghost. He grabbed at it like he was trying to catch it. And then I ran. I suppose I should be grateful you endured these horrors for such a long time. All right. I have your account memorized. Good day. Oh, you scared the poor girl, Sherry. Did she really deserve that? We all got what we wanted. She talked. I stay silent. Oh, let's get back to the crime scene. I always love seeing you explain simple things to simpletons. Simple things to simpletons. Uh, so, we need to go back to the seance room. Ooh, it's like an interesting little icon there, huh? Alright, cool. Um, I'm not sure we need that pinned anymore, but we're going down to the seance room. Just want to take a really quick look and see if anything's changed in the room. I don't want them to, like, hide things on me, man. You know, they slip things in, they change the environment. Yeah. Extra new people there. Huh? We're gonna do this, man. I don't know. Sherlock Holmes, you gotta be a detective. I, I'm, I'm digging this. What do you guys think of this? Let me know uh, in the comments. I will probably do a little bit more of this and then we'll wrap up this video, but I, I'm, I'm digging it so far. I hope you guys are too. Lady Craven retired to her room to rest. Lord Craven remained here until the staff reported that the medium was locked in his room. Hmm. With enough clues, Sherlock can use imagination to reconstruct the past, interact with the node to begin then recreate an accurate version of events. Here, try to place the seance participants in their correct positions. I'm pretty sure we can do that. Uh, I want to see about this this pin. I, I kind of hoping the pin would go away after after figuring it out, but I guess I have to unpin it. Okay, uh, so we need to put them in the right place. Oh, okay, he's going to lay on the floor and think. Oh, am I John? Oh, nice. Hey. All right. Cool. Uh, so how do I do this? Just just interact with it? Oh, okay. We snap our fingers and she's in position. Great. Uh, it's the same person. Oh, maybe I do it again? Yep. Okay. So that looks like... That doesn't look like the dude. I, I think it's the other guy that was here. Definitely the guy throwing the chair. <laughs> yeah. And then that would mean that he is here. So it would be about like this. 
Seance was, uh, the medium was here. And then this is Lord Craven with a chair. He's throwing it at the ghost that appeared, which ended up over there. And then she is pointing, not at him, but at the window. And then there is the lady outside that she can see. Okay, I think that's, I think this is how it happened. It all began when the lady screamed and pointed at the window. Lord Craven jumped up, ready to face anything, ghost or human. The medium shrank back in dismay. He was not expecting such a reaction and had to quickly hide the ghost. The lady was the only one left touching the diamond, at least until she fainted. Hmm. Amazing. It's like you saw it with your own eyes, sir. Oh, I forgot that you were here. I guess I should discuss all of this with Lady Craven. <laughs> the Cravens are upstairs in room 226. It is one of our finest suites. If the lady was touching a diamond, then she would have felt the ghost take it. What do you think it felt like, Sherry? A jellyfish? Wow. <laughs> wow. A jellyfish. Yeah. Eh. I don't know. There's a mirror here. There's some other stuff here, too. All right, let's head back into this side. Um, I probably should hit Z more often. I don't think there's anything to interact with here, but I need to get used to hitting Z because it'll probably highlight certain things I can talk to, right? And that's... I might miss things if I don't. I don't know. Isn't life too short to remain sober? <laughs> I agree. All right. Uh, let's head up this way. Uh, 226. I don't really recall where that was. Wasn't that one of the rooms we saw... Yeah, 225 is there. Maybe it's down this way. Near the pictures. All right, yeah, probably near here. Lady Craven is not who she seems. Remember her behavior in the hall. Oh, interesting. Gossip can help you investigate a case or even discover a new one. But don't hesitate to eavesdrop on people. Lady when you Craven see... is not who she seems. Remember her behavior in the when hall. When you see an ear icon, Try to filter out important words from useless chatter. What actions by Lady Craven arouse suspicion in the maids? So W to keep and S to discard. So the chef steals food. Probably not important. Sons bad acquaintances. Like one of her sons? Probably not. Oh, it looks like we have a timer at the top. Oh no! Oh, that's very fast. Uh oh no. Oh, it looks like we can do it again. Wait, maybe? Lady Craven okay, is we not can. who she seems. Okay, I gotta Remember be faster. All right, uh, so what actions by Lady Craven arouse suspicions in the maids? So there's a timer at the top. Let's see. Uh, we have sun's bad acquaintances. No, price is rising. Probably not. Uh, cannot use a fish knife. Probably not. Uh, lots of guests this summer. That's not suspicious. Chef steals food. I don't think she's a chef. Was on the lookout, maybe? Okay, that's one. Made her husband drunk. That's the second one, maybe. I don't know. We're out of time. All right, we have two of them. Okay, okay, okay. I, I think we can get this. Lady Craven is not. I have no idea though. That's that's a lot of stuff here. Uh, lots of guests in the summer. No. Prices rising. No. Made her husband drunk. I think so. Chef steals food. Probably not. Bad acquaintances. No. Was on the lookout. Yes. Cannot use a fish knife. I don't know what that means. Wait, I just failed it before the timer. I think the fish knife one might have been the one to pick. Why is Lady that suspicious? Craven is not who she seems. All right, hang on. Uh, lots of guests this summer. Price is rising. Cannot use a fish knife. Weird. Okay, uh, chef steals food, made her husband drunk, and was on the lookout. Okay, weird. <gasps> gossip regarding Lady Craven. I overheard two staff members talking about Lady Craven. They gossiped that the woman may not be the wife of Lord Craven. Oh, by their observation, she was on the lookout during the evening while trying to get Lord Craven drunk. They also noticed that the lady was unsure how to properly use a fish knife. Why is that suspicious, though? Not using, not knowing how to use a knife. Why is that suspicious? I mean, that's that's kind of weird, isn't it? I don't know. Says the says the maid who has firearms training. <laughs> Let's head inside. Right, something's ripped up. There's the cane. We got dripping wine bottle, and then there's a knife right there, too. Uh-oh. Oh, this just got a whole lot more complicated, didn't it? You're here. 
At last. I didn't do that. I swear, I found her this way. Well, I did have some questions for her, but it seems I've arrived too late. Now it's a matter for the police. Mr. Holmes, you said it yourself. They're children. They'll only make things worse. You, you promised me you would investigate. Investigate a theft, not a murder. Fear not. I will tell them all I've uncovered. Please help me. The police will surely accuse me of Emma's death. You are the only one who can find the truth. Fine, but only because it's slightly more interesting than the walls of my room. Tell me what happened. Look, after you left, I waited in the seance room until the servants locked up Mr. Galici the medium. And was your mistress there too? Oh, so you... you know? I suppose I shouldn't yeah. be surprised. Regardless, the staff took Emma to her room. She was still feeling dizzy. So you didn't follow her. Interesting. Yeah, why not? Where's the medium? Is Mr. Galici still being held? And where did the servants secure him? He's in room 225. But that pigeon-livered man at the reception desk refused to give me the key. Well, I will have to visit reception myself then. Perhaps he will listen to reason. 225 would be presumably right next to 226. I wonder if there is a door between the rooms. Where did you go instead? To the bar. It had been almost an hour. I see. And how long did you stay? My part took of a well-earned whiskey or two before retiring upstairs. Ask anyone there. Now we arrive at the tragedy at hand. So what transpired after your detour to the bar? I headed up to my room to find Emma on the bed. I didn't pay her much attention at first. I was still preoccupied with that damned medium. But when I realized she was silent, I drew closer and discovered she was dead. What's more, the diamond lay right there beside her. Oh, well, that is splendid news. Splendid? The return of the diamond will be cold comfort if I live out my days in a jail cell. You must help me. Jail cell? Let me cell? see what I can find. G-A-O-L? Jail cell? Sherlock. Why am I not surprised? Interesting. Uh, you know what? That's an interesting way to leave the episode, I think. Yeah, things are going to get really, really cool this way. So if you like this, give it a thumbs up. Let me know. This is Sherlock Holmes, Chapter 1. Uh, it's, uh, it's, I think it's splendid so far. Uh, if you, if, if you like it, let me know. Uh, I think we'll hopefully see you next time. This has been fun. Bye-bye.